Well, in order to understand another event that happened on this Tuesday of the last week before the crucifixion, you need to understand who the Sadducees are. Now, remember the Pharisees and the scribes were experts in the law, and the scribes, of course, uh, actually writing out the law and, and copying the law. Pharisees uh, trying to live by the letter of the law. But the Sadducees, uh, while they believed in the law, uh, didn't believe that it was a resurrection of the dead. They believed when you died, you died, and that was all there was to it. And so the way to re always remember the difference between the Pharisees and the Sadducees is the Sadducees didn't believe in the resurrection, so they were sad, you see. <laughs> in any case, uh, they came questioning, and uh, obviously they were questioning more about the resurrection uh, because they didn't believe in it than they were about marriage relationships. But nevertheless, the question they posed was one about marriage and had to do with Deuteronomy chapter 25, verse 5, uh, where there was a responsibility uh, that if a, a man died and his wife was still barren, uh, that, that one of his brothers would then be responsible to try to bear children with her. Uh, and uh, so they asked this ridiculous question. They, they say if a man dies and his widow is childless, uh, and they, they even spoke that Moses had given this instruction and the next brother was not able to give her a child and he died and then the next brother wasn't able to all the way down to seven brothers okay <laughs> you talk about ridiculous uh, but uh, they they got all the way down to seven brothers having tried to uh, give this woman a child and and uh, they all died and the woman died as well and then the question was in verse 28 in the resurrection whose wife will she be <laughs> will she be the original husband or one of the seven brothers and uh, of course they didn't believe in the resurrection so they were quite interested to see what Jesus would say about the resurrection and uh, and the fact that uh, Moses had given this instruction and he says uh, you're mistaken you don't understand uh, the scriptures nor do you understand the power of God and the resurrection uh, there is neither marrying or giving in marriage uh, but will be like the angels which uh, here again so often has been taken out of context and said we're going to be angels in heaven no Jesus didn't say we're going to be like angels in, in appearance or uh, in function, uh, but only in the attitude that we would have. We'll now have the mind of Christ. We'll now not, not no longer have earthly desires, uh, and uh, we're, we're going to be only like angels from the standpoint of uh, the, the desires that we have. and. Uh, the kind of relationship we have with God, the love and the uh, intimacy and all of that we desire here on earth will be fulfilled in the presence of Jesus and God the Father. And uh, it, it says that uh, he really put him on notice when he said, uh, don't you remember in scripture where God speaks? And he said, I am the God of Abraham Isaac and Jacob. He is not a God of dead, but he's a God of the living. And so if the Sadducees wanted to believe when they were dead, they were dead. He's saying, well, God's not the God of the dead. He's the God of the living. And Abraham lives, Isaac lives, and Jacob lives. And uh, they were astonished at his teaching. So I think that it's very important for us to say that uh, marriage, well, uh, very important here on earth, uh, will not be important in heaven. That doesn't come to say that we won't know our wives or our husbands in heaven. That just means that our desires and our relationship with them will be more of a godly relationship, uh, more of a uh, relationship that God will allow us to enjoy. Uh, and I, I think all of you recognize that I've preached this many, many times. We try to imagine what heaven is like compared to this earth. And you cannot compare heaven with this earth. Look at Isaiah 65:17. He says, 
he says it creates a new heaven and a new earth and the former things won't even come to mind that this mean we'll forget everything that happened here on earth uh, but things will be so wonderful that we'll not compare them with this earth and that satisfies me quite well uh, that God says although there'll be no marriage or giving in marriage uh, that doesn't mean that it won't be a wonderful, wonderful place. It doesn't mean we won't recognize and love uh, those that we've had and we've loved here on earth. It just means we won't be comparing it with the relationship we had here on earth. The key here, of course, is not about marriage or whether there's marriage mm -hmm. in heaven. The key here is that uh, uh, there is a resurrection and God is the God of the living and not the dead. And so there is, obviously, in the Old Testament, the point that God is the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, because they are not dead, they're living in heaven, and uh, we too will live with them in heaven if we've trusted in Jesus as Savior. Hope that answers some questions you may have had about this section of Scripture. God bless you, and have a wonderful day. You know that you can know that you're going to heaven. Most people say, I hope so, but uh, the scriptures in the book of Romans make it very clear. We've all sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Uh, that is, sin is anything that's displeasing to God, and we've all done things displeasing to God, so we all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. And God demonstrated his own love toward us, and that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. That's Romans 5, 8. So we are sinners, but Christ died for us. And then in Romans 5, 6, it says, while well, we were still helpless, that is, we couldn't do good enough works to earn our way into heaven. At the right time, Christ died for the ungodly, Romans 5, 6. We were helpless, but at the right time, Christ died for us. Romans 6, 23, for the wages of sin is death. We all earned our wages, which is death. But the free gift of God is eternal life in Jesus Christ our Lord. Now, that means there's nothing we can do to earn it or deserve it. It's a free gift of God. It's by grace and grace alone. But that's not freedom to just continue in sin either. And the way that we receive it is in Romans 10 verse 9. If we confess with our mouth Jesus is Lord and believe in our heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Well, I hope that you know for certain that you're going to heaven. I hope that you've turned away from sin and self, turned to Jesus alone, who gives by grace eternal life. Yeah, yes, it, there is some surrender involved, and yes, there is a, a turning away from sin, but that's not how we earn heaven. We don't earn it. We, des we get it from him as a gift, and that's what the scripture says clearly. It's by grace and grace alone. God bless you and have a great day.